Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. We're the Yahoo and the Tori YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. It is the second chapter of Revelations. And we appreciate you guys. We thank you guys very much. For those who do not know who we are, who are we, gentlemen? We are the people that believe in the law of the and commands, our all generations. We believe that the name of our Messiah is Yahushua HaMashiach. It was never Jesus. And that we should be keeping his commands, that we should be keeping the commands of the Torah for all time because that is what we are told to do. Now, the Christian church will have us say that the law, statutes, and commandments of our Creator are on a tree, that they no longer apply to us, that they are for um, a different kind of people. Um, what do you make of this, Eli? Uh, they, there's one Torah for the stranger, one for the Eber, and we should all be keeping the Torah. Yeah, and we had a guy yesterday that came on YouTube, and um, he was convinced there's only four commandments for the Gentiles, and he quotes like Acts. And I'm like, four Four commandments only for the Gentiles. Can you imagine that? Commands. Huh? What are the four commands? I don't know. He, it's an axe. It's whatever Paul said with axe when they were when they were disputing their stuff and they, and they were going through it. So he believes because of what Brother Paul said, Shaul, that there are four Torah commands. Now we could easily disrupt that by saying, you know, quoting Torah itself. Um, there is one Torah for the stranger, one for the Ebrahim. There's there's no such one. Only Gentiles only have four Torahs. There four commands. Gentiles aren't saved. There are no house of Gentile. If you are a Gentile, that means you are out of covenant with our creator. That means you are not obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments set forth in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. We are told that we need to abide by these. We are told to write these on our heart. We are told to write them on our doorposts, on our frontlets of our eyes, that we're supposed to discuss them when we sit down and when we get up, where when we when we hang out with our kids, when we're doing it, what we're doing just with you guys. And the Torah of our Creator is amazing. It is simply absolutely amazing. It is the greatest thing that people seem to reject. It is the greatest free thing that the world rejects. All right, let's get into this. Today I have a little bit of reading from um, from yesterday's. And before we get into this, Revelations, I want to go into, again, a quick, um, the churches of Revelation. And these are the churches that we talk about. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Theatrera, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And this is the island where um, John Patmos right there was set. I can't zoom in on this thing. I guess I can't zoom at all. Um, Nope, can't zoom. But anyway, this is what we're talking about right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, these churches have all come, and these churches have all gone. And so people are like, well, they're, they're talking about us today. These are the churches. We are the, we're the Church of Philadelphia. No, you're not a Church of Philadelphia. Not according to this, if you want to keep with what Scripture says. Now, let's go and let's read um, a little bit about um, what Brother Glenn sent us. And again, I, I want to thank Brother Glenn for... Being part of our family and being part of this group that we get a lot of um, help from him. And we, we really, I really, really appreciate Brother Glenn a lot. Okay. Shalom, Jason family. And this is from yesterday's reading. Another great reading that should prompt people to do some research. As you mentioned, Yochanan was exiled by the Romans to the island of Patmos because of his faith. On Patmos, Yochanan wrote the book of Revelation, Apocalyptus in Greek, which means an unveiling or a disclosure. Revelation reveals how prophetic messages in the Old Covenant that foretell future events will be fulfilled. It also shows how the events foretell future events which events will be fulfilled. Uh, did I say that? I think I just... I think no, I read the, the same first thing. one. I read the same line together. Let me try this again, guys. Revelation reveals how prophetic passages in the Old Covenant that foretell future events will be fulfilled. It also shows how the events predicted in Matthew 24, Matthew 25, and 2, 2 Thessalonians, will come to pass. Much of the verbiage in Revelations is metaphorical. His eyes were like a blazing fire. His feet were like polished bronze. His voice was like the roar of many waters. A sharp double-edged sword came from his mouth. The seven stars are seven angels that watch and report on the seven lampstands, which, which represent the seven churches. These seven churches have different spiritual characteristics. Only two of the seven have not, only two of the seven have not been severely criticized and told they need to change their ways or end up in the fire. Of course, these churches have vanished since, but their spirit is alive. In other words, if you live in the spirit of Philadelphia, you are a delight to Yah, but if you live like Laodicea, you are an abomination to Yah. Revelation 3.17 reads, Because you say, Rich I am, and I am made rich, and need none at all, and do not know that you are wretched and pitiable and poor and blind and naked. They basically rejected Yah and Yahushua because the riches made them think they don't need Elohim. And they didn't realize how full of lawlessness they were. 
Some Bible scholars claim that the context into which it is placed clearly makes it prophetic, as is the book of Revelation itself, saying Yochanan was taken to the Lord's day in the spirit, so he was translated to the spirit in order to be shown, shown prophetic future events. He was taken to the millennium from its first day forward. He had to be in that dimension in order to see and record these future events and revelations. And again, those are my dogs. They're just saying hi. Others say Yochanan was in prayer on Sunday. But in Yochanan's time, Sunday was not the Shabbat. And um, Sunday is not our Shabbat either. It is a seventh-day Shabbat. Civil laws requiring the observance of Sunday date back to Emperor Constantine the Great, who designed Sunday as a legal day of rest and worship in 321. This law, however, was not specifically Christian, since Sunday was the day of the sun god, for pagans as well as the Lord's Day for Christians. The term Lord's Day is used only once in Scripture, Revelation 1.10. To me, it clearly means on the Sabbath. If you read the Hebrew Bible, it clearly reads in Yeshayahu 58.13. If thou turn away the re thy regal on account of Shabbatos, from doing thy sheftez on my Yom, Yom Kadosh, my holy day, and, and call Shabbatos an oneg, a delight, the Kadosh Hashem, holy day of Hashem, honored, and if thou shalt honor it, not doing thine darkin, nor finding thy own shefetz, nor speaking worldly words. I also agree with Yochanan and was taken to the Lord's day in the spirit. So he was translated into spirit in order to be shown prophetic future events. But again, that most likely happened on the Shabbat when he was in prayer and meditating. All right. Anyone have anything from that? Are you guys um, good? Yeah, uh, that was good. I think uh, that... Thoughts? That even clears up maybe the, the Lord's day we saw the day of Yahuwah. We didn't know if that was like his coming back or if that was like... Well, that was. Yeah, absolutely. And for those, um, we are actually on a different website right now, um, but it won't it won't be there too long. Um, we are on Ya Scriptures Y A H S C R I P T U R E S dot online because the Hallelujah Scriptures was able to get our Yahoo and the Torah website kicked offline yesterday, and so we are working on getting that back up and um, fighting the demons that do what they do. Link will be in the description. Huh? Yeah, yeah the link, the link will be in the description and um yeah, and what's funny though is they nuked that site yesterday and uh we got it back up. We had 60 downloads already right out of the gate. In fact, let me let me just show that to you. This is this is the funny thing here. Let me just show this real quick while we're while we're here. So, yesterday yesterday before they doomed us, we had 425 downloads of the of the English restored name scriptures. Now, when we had to start up our new site, we ended up with right here, we had 20 of the scriptures, Yahuwah, uh, 20 restored name scriptures, and we had 20 Israeli, uh, not Israeli, is Israelita Nazarena. So we had uh, 40 Spanish scriptures and 20 English scriptures. And so they were unable to destroy the word of Yah. In fact, I mean, 60 downloads in a day, that's, that's absolutely great right there. So um, all hail the power of Yah and his ways and his word. You're not going to be able to cover this up doesn't matter how demonic you are. Um, the word of Yah is going to be forever. Okay, let's begin. To the messenger of the assembly at of Ephesus write, He who is holding the seven stars in his right hand, who is walking in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, says this. Okay, now the last thing is, um, read the last verse. Actually, I'll just go back over here. We'll read it right here um, from yesterday. Because we need to figure out what these lampstands are. Here we are. So right here, the last thing it says in 20 of uh, Revelation 1. The secret of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. Here's the secret, guys. The seven stars are messengers of the seven assemblies and the seven lampstands which you saw are seven assemblies. So are these messengers from the assemblies or messengers for these like angels for the assemblies or these like messengers? I don't know, but this in 20, go back to, to verse 20 in your first verse one, yep. chapter one. Is messengers capitalized? Mm, no, no. It's not. Okay, so I don't know if these are the messengers, messengers like we're talking about. I think those are capitalized, right? If, but here is the thing in the second chapter here, and I guess it doesn't have this one capitalized either. So, but this one says as well to the messenger, and I do believe these are the angels, right? And so I think he's. This is a message to the the messenger, or it, I guess it, it wouldn't have to necessarily be the messenger. I mean, if it's a lower case, it could very well be the guy who's given them this this thing. Sefer yeah. says angel. Does it? Okay, Sefer does say angel. And to the angel, so yeah. So these are, I guess, angels. All right, let's, let's continue with this. So here we go. Um, to the messenger of the assembly of Ephos, write: He who is holding the seven stars in his right hand, who is walking in the midst of the seven golden lampstands, says this. 
I know your works and your labor and your endurance and that you are not able to bear evil ones and have tried those who say they are emissaries and are not and have found them false. And you have been bearing up and have endurance and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. But I hold this against you, that you have left your first love. All right, what is your first love? Uh, Yahuwah. It should be the Torah or Yahuwah. Yeah, you guys might not know who your first love is, but your first love absolutely created you and designed you. In fact, before you guys were ever born, the one who loves you more than anything designed you guys, designed your little hairy uh, chins and, and things and made your curly hairs or not curly hairs. That is who loved us. And even though you may have not found your first love, your first love is our designer. That's the one who loved us so much that he gave us life and he, he, he let us run these, these, this world that we're in right here. Not run, but walk these lands that we are in. Okay, so they, lost their, they left their first love. That's not good. Five. So remember from where you have fallen and repent and do the first works or else I shall come to you speedily and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now, what are works? The Christians will say that, um, we've gone over this before at nauseum, but uh, the Christians will say that works will not save you. You cannot be saved by works. Um, it looks like this church has had... Um, they're, they're dealing with works here, right? They're yeah, dealing this with is what we thought we were talking about yesterday when we were last chapter. We wouldn't know if they were good people or bad people. And it looks like they've gone astray. Yeah. And Eli, how do you know if people have gone astray? What is the, what is the line? Where's our test? They transgress the Torah. Right. If you transgress the laws, statutes, and commandments of like the 158 commands that we have in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. If you fall away from those, then um, that's, that's your, that's, you're not going to get into any kind of good works whatsoever. Okay, six, yet this you have, that you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. All right, we must hate the Nicolaitans. They well, they did, they did bad stuff. Yeah, they, they're, they're thrown under the bus on this whole thing. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruhach says to the assemblies. To him who overcomes, I shall give to eat of the tree of Kai, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. Okay, so this says, this is clearly, this is about the assemblies, Right? And Brother Glenn says, you know, we can be have a, a, not a physical, but we can have a spiritual. These people are in a, one of these spiritual churches or something of the sort. The world doesn't care about works because the world doesn't care about the Torah of our creator. So when it's talking about overcoming, the people that overcome it, it's very, very clear in, in a lot of verses, a lot of chapters, a lot of books that we get to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of paradise at some point right and so this is good news right when we are able to get to this tree when we're able to get to this tree sanctioned that is um are, is not going against the law statutes and commandments of our creator that's gonna be amazing eight and to the messenger of the assembly of smyrna right this says the first and the last who became dead and came to life came to kai i know your works and pressure and poverty yet you are rich and the blasphemy of those who say they are Yehudim are not, but are a congregation of Satan. Now, people quote this stuff all the time. They, they will quote all of this all the time like it is right now. Like this is to the, the talking to us. Is this to us or is this to the old? Can we take? I feel like this is to the old people. I don't feel like they're, I mean, we could know not to do bad things. Right. Hold on. My dogs are about to bark. Just a second. All right. Sorry, guys. Um, we are rolling into this. Now, back to this part right here about poverty. I know your works and pressure and poverty, yet you are rich. What do you guys make of that? And, and, and the Supper says the same thing. I know your works, the tribulation, and poverty, but it's in parentheses. I think, it's, I think he's like thinking they're like fake, right? They're faking their poverty and they're like sitting, there, sitting on loads of cash. Right, and then it says, um, and the blasphemy of those who say they are Yehudim and who are not, but are a congregation of Satan. That, that reminds me of the Hallelujah Scriptures, right? These people that say they are uh, Hebrews, that say they are Yah's people, and they are, without a shadow of a doubt, spending enormous amounts of money attempting to keep the word of our Creator offline. So it seems to me like they are... Crypto Jews that are supposed Torah keepers that have gone into a grift that have basically solidified inside of this grift. 
Um, it is simply amazing. But yeah, they are absolutely demons dressed up in human suits doing very evil things. Um, anything else? Do you guys have anything else on this? Mm, I don't think so too much. I think these people were like saying they're 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 like like he knows he knows what they go through, but they're really rich. He's like hey, you guys you guys pretend to be something, but you're not. All right. So continue on. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. See, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison in order to try you. And you shall have pressure 10 days, but trustworthy until death. And I shall give you the crown of Kai. Does your guy say trustworthy unto death? Yep. Be trustworthy unto death. Yep. Yeah, I think I said that wrong. Be trustworthy unto death and I shall give you the crown of Kai. I just have um, editor's paranoia. I'm just always, because we're, we're doing the editing of all this stuff. So I'm always, even though we read it and I listen and I see that it's right, I always wonder if it is. Okay, um, what do you guys think about that? Um, somebody's going to go into prison. They have to hang out there for 10 days. There's going to be pressure on them 10 days. It was like uh, they weren't. their belief was not liked by the Yahudim. Uh, their belief was not liked by pagans. So they would. They were punished. They were punished for their belief. That was. They were getting martyred for it. Yeah, and so they are... Um, this is Smyrna. So Smyrna is about to get stomped or um, they're about to go... All these guys are going to prison. So they're about to be owned essentially in in the coming I don't know years months I don't know how long it takes before all this happened 11 he who has an ear let him hear what the ruhak says to the assemblies he who overcomes shall by no means be harmed by the second death okay that's really good right the second yep. death is what jade that is the judgment so we die here on the earth and we get a second then we get a chance to see whether we are the children of Yahuwah or whether we get cast into the lake of fire yeah okay 12 and to the messenger of the assembly in Pergamos, write, he who has the sharp two-edged sword says this. Okay, who has the two-edged sword? I think Yahushua. Yeah, because we had that in the last chapter, right? Out Remember, of out of his mouth came out of like a, a two-edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where the throne of Satan is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny the belief in me. Even in the days in which Antipas was my trustworthy witness, who was killed near you, where Satan dwells. So there's some more stories we're missing. Yeah, we're, we're missing a, quite a bit of this as well. Um, and what's interesting is John is writing this, but he's quoting Yahushua, right? right. So if you look on this, and, and verse 18 is, is, a, is a very clear example of quotes and quote inside of quotes all the way to the end. I'll show you guys this, and you'll only understand this if you, if you hear this from the, the editors themselves. Okay, 14. But I hold a little against you, because you have there those who adhere to the teachings of Bilaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat offerings to idols and to commit whoring. So you also have those who adhere to the teaching of the Nicolaitans, which I hate. All right, whoever the Nicolaitans are. They're just the bad stuff. Yeah, they're not happy. Messiah's not good with them. Those dudes need to, like, fix something. Repent. For Repent, or else I shall come to you speedily. And fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. To him who overcomes, I shall give some of the hidden manna to eat. And I shall give him a white stone. And on the stone a renewed name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. All right, thoughts? Um, I don't exactly know what's talking about here. I mean, white stone, I don't know what that, but I guess if you overcome... Well, it says he who overcomes, you're going to get a new name. You're, first of all, you're going to get food. You're going to hidden manna. Whatever that is, that's going to be awesome because hidden manna tastes like, it sounds like it's like sugar candy or something or like um, sweet bread, something of the sort. Um, so we're going to get hidden manna and then we get a white stone. That'd be cool, right? And on this white stone is a name written, a renewed name. So whatever our names are, is this... Is this saying that we're all going to end up with a new name? Um, I don't know. I don't know what... Uh, yeah. I don't think so. I think on the stone it shows like someone else's name, like a, a different name. So your name is always going to be Jaden in the Heavenly Things? I don't know. That sounds pretty English names. You think we're all going to be there? I don't I mean, know. Abra I mean, Abram became Abraham. Yeah. We have I mean, uh, Jacob I mean, became uh, Israel. Other people came from other nations. I don't think their names would change when they went into the Hebrew land. Probably not. Probably not. But, I mean, we are, uh, at the end of the day, we are all... I mean, Hebrews, I mean, we were just stuck in captivity. And so we may be, um, you know, South Americans or, you know, whatever. Uh, but it's, we're, we're all the same tribe, essentially, unfortunately, where we're all stuck in captivity at the moment. Um, 
so thoughts, Jake, Kate, anyone have anything else on this? And I shall give him a white stone. It says clearly, it gives him a white stone and the renewed name written on it, which no one knows except him who receives it. It's like a name tag. It's yeah, like, you, well, you're going to get... your name is. Right, but, it, but also, regardless, I don't think it's a name tag because it says written, no one except him who receives it. So I think that might be a holy name or a name or some, something else. It might have a different name. I don't know. Um, but it sounds cool, and you would want to get a white stone, I suppose, and have your cool super white stone with your, your real name by Yah. Okay, 18. And to the messenger of the assembly in Thuratira, write. Okay, and this is where I would like to take a um, Torah or a scripture editor's note and show you guys this. Because this right here, this quote right here that says this says, right, this quote Basically, all the way to the very end of this chapter is Messiah Yahushua. They're quoting what Messiah Yahushua said inside of this. So it's a quote inside. It's a quote inside of double quotes. Um, and I don't know if that makes sense to anyone, but maybe this will when we get to it. And to the messenger of the assembly in Thuritira, write: This says the Ben of Yahuwah, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like burnished brass. Right? So this, again, this says the bin of Yahuwah, right? The son of Yahuwah says this. So, I have something to interrupt you. What do you got? Back on about the names. The names, yeah. Isaiah 62, 2. Uh huh. It says, And the nations shall, shall see your righteousness and all sovereigns your esteem, and you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of Yahuwah designates. Yeah, so we're called by a new name, except what do we make of this um, stone that nobody knows? No one except him who receives it. I mean, so we get a new name, we won't, I guess maybe we keep our name, maybe it's a special name no one knows. Maybe it's a name that Yah only calls us by, or Messiah calls us by. Yeah, or maybe. maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, thank you, Miss Nicole. Let's continue on here. Um, where was I going with this? Sorry. You were on... 18. 18. Um, no, uh, 19 now. Let's go to the 18. And the messenger, and to the messenger of the assembly of Thuritira, right? This says the son of Yahuwah, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet are like burnished brass. So, guys, again, this is coming out of the mouth of Yahushua, kind of. It's through the mouth of John, through the mouth of Yahushua. I know your works and love and service and belief and your endurance. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. That's good. But I hold against you that you allow that woman, Isabel, who calls herself a prophetess to teach and lead my servants astray, to commit whoring and to eat offerings to idols. Is this talking about Deborah? Maybe. Is this talking about the Holy Scriptures? Uh, she does. I don't know if she calls herself a prophetess, but she definitely thinks and, and tries to teach and lead people. Um, and she, she does all sorts of evil stuff. And she does do things to uh, commit whoring. Let us continue. Well, who do you think Jezebel is? Who is this? Who is you talking about here? Jezebel. Is it the same one? I think it's spelled the same way. I don't understand when there might be another one that's just the evil. Yeah, I mean, we know as Jezebel uh, who did all of this, but I mean, we're talking the in the. Why is he saying this right now? Uh, I think like the demon of Jezebel lived on for a long time, and everyone kind of just went on with it. Yeah, she now lives in New Zealand. References to kings, first kings and second kings. First kings and second kings. Okay. So that's, that is Jezebel then, probably. Yep. And uh, it's probably like doing her. Maybe they're doing her teachings. Yeah, maybe this stuff carried on throughout years and years and years, and so um, whatever she was uh, evil that it passed on. Okay, twenty one. And I gave her time to repent of her whoring, and she did not repent. And she went to the dogs. See, I am throwing her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great affliction, unless they repent of their works. And I shall slay her children with death. And all the assembly shall know that I am the one searching the kidneys and hearts. And I shall give to each one of you according to your works. So where it says kidneys, the cypher says minds and hearts. I think kidneys and hearts are right. Um, I remember, I think Grand went over this. I think Brother Glenn went over this. Because remember we were reading, um, what was that one that talked about the kidneys and hearts? Was, yeah, it, was like, it in class, in the in Sirach? <laughs> I think it was talking about in Sirach. I think it had that. Yeah, oh, wis Solomon. wisdom of Solomon. Yeah, the kidneys and hearts. I think that is the right translation of that. And so Yah um, searches our kidneys and hearts. And we, we thought that was funny the first time we heard it, but I think it's right. Okay, 24. And to you I say, and to the rest of Thura Atira, as many as do not possess this teaching and who have not known the depths of Satan, as they called them, I am not putting on you another burden. Um. What does that mean there? As I say to you, the rest of the, as many as do not possess this teaching, okay? So um, a lot of them have the teaching of Isabel. Yeah, I am not putting you on another burden. Uh, anyone? 
He says it. So the ones that don't have that teaching, they're... He's not going to hurt the people that are uh, not doing those teachings. It seems like there's a mixed multitude of, like, good and evil people there that are, like, have mixed beliefs. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think there's a lot of people... that Understanding the depths of Satan, I do not think... And that's... I got to go back to the Hallelujah Scriptures. I do not think people understand the depths of Satan and that Satan himself will actually go in and start producing a Bible... And hold it back for 13 years and basically do 13 years worth of damage. Um, that is the power of Satan. He is, he is a, a master at this stuff. Okay, 25. But hold fast what you have until I come. And he who overcomes and guards my works until the end, to him shall I give authority over the nations. And he shall shepherd them with a rod of iron as the potter's vessel shall be broken to pieces as I also have received from my father. Okay, hold on. Um, what do we have here? Keep your head right there, Jay. That sun is really bright. Uh, uh. We, there's, there's big rewards for keeping the Torah. There's big rewards for doing the will of the Father. It says, guard my works. He who overcomes and guards my works until the end. Is guarding my works, when he says guard my works, is that keeping Easter and Christmas and Thanksgiving? Nope. Is that is that the works of Yah? Nope, that's not even dying on the Whose cross. Whose works are those? Works are are the Torah. Those works, the works of the works of keeping Christmas. That's uh, all Hasatan. Yes, yeah, those are the works of Hasatan, right? Those are not the works of our Creator, right? Okay, so we need to guard the Torah until the end, right? And then He says, "I'm going to give you authority over the nations." What do you, What do you guys make of that? Like. We get big props for keeping the Torah. There's big rewards for those that keep the Torah. Yeah, I, I think that there will be. And whether or not you want authority, if you are somebody who is very educated in the Torah and there's other people over there, they were, are going to want to know what you know. And so I don't know what that exactly says. But um, those who keep the laws, statutes, and commandments, I do believe have a much better spot at the place. And then he also says right here, he received of his father. Now, if he says, my father, and he is the father, received from my father, that would make our Messiah a liar. Because he wouldn't have received it from his father because he was the father. That is where we, this is, gets tricky to the Trinitarians and to the people who believe that the father and the son are the exact same individual. That breaks Deuteronomy 6, the Shema. Our Yahoo is one. Okay, let's continue on. So, he received from his father, right? As I also have received from my father and I shall give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. All right. Now are the morning stars, are we talking about that big mace that the vampire slayers could used be, to Or it could be like the sun maybe. You think he's going to give somebody a weapon? Like a big heavy weapon no, with I mean, a, a he ball might. with a spikes on it? He might. You think? I don't think that's what the, I don't think that's morning stars. Capitalized. Morning stars capitalized? Yeah. Mine's not capitalized. Mine's right there. I think it's, it's bad, right? Morning Star? Yeah. It's capitalized. Uh, it, would be a proper, it would be a proper name. Like somebody is the Morning Star. I will give him the Morning Star. Um, I think it's the sun. Is it the Morning Star? It could be the Morning I think Star. It could come down in the morning. There's no star. You can't see stars during the morning. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't know what to make of that. I don't know what the Morning Star is. Uh, so anyone out there that may know what the Morning Star is, let us know. And we'll go over that tomorrow um, when we do this. Um, 29, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach says to the assemblies. Okay, so um, those who have an ear, right? We all have ears and we are able to decipher this stuff and we are all able to put it up there. If this is not directly to us, what do we take out of this? What can we What can we take away from this? Um, that there's rewards for those who keep the Torah and that that's what we should be doing, that we should not be falling into the... Uh Works of Jezebel, not following the works of Balaam, not following the works of don't do as the prophets. Don't do as the nations do. Don't be Torahist. Yeah, don't be Torahist. Yeah. Secure yourself. Secure your family. Secure your kids. Secure your wife. Secure your husband. Secure everybody, right? Secure them in the Torah. There's no security in this world unless you are with our Creator because this world is all about destruction. It's all about evil. It's all about horribleness. And the only people that are shining the lights anywhere are people in the Torah. And so this is why we are always out there trying to get people to read the Torah, enjoy the Torah. Oh, and the final thing was, let me show you guys right here. At the verse 29 right here, see that when I was talking about verse 18, that quote at the very top, that one lasted from verse 18 all the way down to verse 29. That was all of what the words of Messiah from the mouth of John 
said. And so hopefully you guys got something like something good from this. Um, hopefully you guys are good. We have a live session we'll be doing tonight with the Ecclesia. I don't know what chapter we're on, but we will. Sirach 9, I think. Sirach 9. Um, we will gladly see you guys there. Hopefully you'll be there at 7 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. And we will see you guys again. Much love. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.